Hey, my name is Connor and welcome to Crypto Empire where we dominate the crypto market. In this video, I'll be sharing my forecast for January of 2023, which mainly includes the situation between Gemini, the digital currency group, and Genesis. And we'll also be taking a look at the price charts to go over what I do see happening next in the near future with the price action. So if that does interest you, be sure to stick with me until the very end. Happy New Year to everybody. Let's get right into it and let the gains be with you. So at the current moment in time, Bitcoin is trading for $16,686. The trend is still sideways. Ethereum trading for $1,215. Also trading sideways at the current moment in time. The overall market cap is $840 billion. But right now, the main thing that should be concerning to anybody still with us interested in crypto, right? The number of people interested, it's getting smaller, but the real ones are still here. But as we can see, Gemini earned users pursue a class action arbitration over Genesis and Digital Currency Group and their sham transaction. So there is a lot to unpack here if you have not heard anything about this situation between Gemini, the Digital Currency Group, and the lending platform Genesis, which is owned by the Digital Currency Group. So one thing to note that's very important is this guy Barry Silbert. He is the founder and the CEO of the Digital Currency Group, also the parent of Grayscale. It's all connected, Grayscale Digital Currency Group and Genesis. So what happened here was the Winklevoss twins, Cameron and Tyler, they are the founders of the Gemini Exchange, and they had a program called Gemini Earn. So what they did was they took customers' money with Gemini Earn, and they said, we're going to pay them an interest percentage. We can see here the Gemini Earn was going to pay at 0.45% to 8% interest, similar to a bank account. So let's say you or I, we opened up a Gemini exchange account and then we wanted to opt into the Gemini earn. So we gave the Winklevoss twins our money to go ahead and invest so that we can get some interest back. What the Gemini earn went ahead and did with the money we gave them, right, all the customers, they went ahead and they gave it to Genesis. And then from that point, Genesis, they took that money and they did what they needed to do to earn this interest that they could pay out. So they traded, they gave loans to maybe Three Arrows Capital, and the Three Arrows Capital had to pay back the loan with interest. So Genesis, what they did was they took the money from Gemini Earn, and it was their job to go ahead and generate the interest. And then they would give it back to Gemini Earn. Gemini Earn would take a cut, and then you would get your cut of the 0.45% to the 8% interest. So it's a big hosh posh, a big conglomerate of transactions, money going everywhere. Long story short, Gemini Earn lent the customers money to Genesis. And then what happened was Genesis lent money to Three Arrows Capital. Three Arrows Capital, that hedge fund went bust. Kyle Davies, Suzu, right? They lost everybody's money. Now they're trying to make it seem like they're not the bad guys on Twitter, right? They're slowly creeping up out of the woodworks, trying to save their public image. But everybody involved in all of this mess is responsible to some degree, right? The Winklevoss twins, they went ahead and they wrote an open letter to Barry Silbert. This was on January 2nd, so very recent. And they basically said that, you know, you owe 1.675 billion. Why aren't you getting back to us, etc., etc., etc. And they gave a deadline, right? They said, you can go ahead and read this letter. I will leave this link in the description below for you to read on your own time. But we can see here that they gave a deadline. They say to that end and for the final time, we are asking you to publicly commit to working together to solve this problem by January 8th, 2023. We remain ready and willing to work with you, but time is running out. So there's a lot of lawsuits happening. First of all, the Winklevoss twins just had a lawsuit pinned on them by Gemini Earn users. Now Gemini Earn users are going after Genesis and the digital currency group because really all parties are responsible. The Winklevoss twins took customers' money from Gemini Earn. They gave it to Genesis in the first place, right? So Cameron and Tyler have some blood on your hands, if you will, by doing that, by giving the customers' money from Genesis, Gemini Earn, I should say, to Genesis, right? Now Genesis and the digital currency group Barry Silbert also have blood on their hands because they lost the money that was given to them from Gemini Earn. And of course, all the customers are angry and pissed off because their money is now gone. So what does this mean for you and why should you care? Well, potentially, 
Gemini is in very hot water. Digital Currency Group, which owns Grayscale, which, which owns Genesis, also in potentially very hot water, over a billion dollars of money gone now. So what does this mean? It means we could have another fiasco where an exchange goes down, a big fund hedge fund, institutional fund goes down. We've seen that happen many times in 2022, and each time it did have a very detrimental effect to the prices of all cryptocurrencies on the market. Right When Luna went down, that triggered Celsius and Three Arrows Capital to also go down, and that's when we really started to see the blood in the bear market really start to drip heavily from the wounds. So we are on high alert here, and we need to pay attention because this could be a catalyst to essentially tank the market and give us that final capitulation that many of us do expect where Bitcoin could potentially go ahead and reach $12,000 to $14,000 in price, potentially also marking a bottom. And we go up from there. Now, one thing to note, if we look at Bitcoin on a yearly chart, on a 12-month chart, let's go ahead and get the BLX, which gets all of Bitcoin since its inception. If we look at this chart, one thing to note here of how the candles trade, the price action, right? Typically, we have a four-year cycle in crypto where it revolves around the Bitcoin halving. So we can see here in 2013, this was essentially like 2017 and 2021. It was the bull market year. After that, we get a red year. Okay, then we get three up years, 2015, 2016, and then of course the infamous 2017 bull run. And then in 2019, that was the bear market, red year. And then again, we get three consecutive green candles, green years. Now 2022 just closed, right? This candle is now finished. It closed a red year. So if history does repeat, this is going to be the only red candle. And then we're going to have three green candles in a row. That is if history does actually repeat or rhyme here. Okay, so we could get a flush down lower. We've seen a few times here. After the red year, we'll get a long wick down, right? We just got the drawings back, but we get a long wick down here in 2015. It was a green candle, but you know prices traded at a much lower price before actually starting to go back up again. So we're gonna see we have this candle here for 2023. If we do get a nice wick down lower and it does close the year green, my speculation is that it does actually do that. I think things will actually pick up this year. I don't know when, I can't give a timeline. But it probably will get worse here before it does get better, which is why I'm saying we'll probably have a nice wick down. We can look back at this video in 12 months' time at the yearly candle. But that's the higher time frame analysis. We know that there is a potential contagion black swan event here on the table for Bitcoin, for the cryptocurrency market, because of what's happening with Gemini and the digital currency group. So my short-term analysis is definitely to proceed with caution right now. If I want to start flipping bullish again, it's very simple what I want to see. I want to see an uptrend start to form. And in order for an uptrend to form, we need to see consecutive higher highs and higher lows on the chart. So if we look at the Bitcoin chart, we see we do have some highs over here towards $17,000. All right, so if we're going to turn bullish here, if we're going to flip bullish, we want to see price start to make some higher highs and higher lows. We do not have that yet. Ever since FTX collapsed over here back in early November, we have really just been trading sideways. All right, this is one big sideways consolidation. The high up here at $18,300, $18,400, and the low of the bear market down here at $15,400. All right, we're in one big trading range. Right now, we're in the middle of the range, and it is really compressing. Price is compressing hard. It has not really done anything since the 17th of December over here. So what does this mean? We know there's a deadline here of January 8th. We know that price is compressing very hard here. I expect massive expansion soon. I think we break out of this range either to the upside or to the downside, of course. We're either going up or down soon. We're not going to go sideways for too much longer. Typically, I say there's only three things that can happen, up, down, or sideways. Right now, we can eliminate that sideways idea because we're either going to go up or down on a massive expansion. Now, if things really are in trouble with Grayscale, with Gemini, with the digital currency group and, De and Genesis, and they're actually bankrupt and they can't come up with the money and these lawsuits play out, et cetera, et cetera, and they go bust, we know it's going to be a very bearish thing for the market. So I would expect at that point new lows, right? I, I would expect this range to get broken to the downside. But if all this is just smoke, and it actually just fades away 
and it's actually not that bad, which looks very unlikely right now, then we likely go up. But the way it does look right now, we definitely have to proceed with caution. It's very uncertain. And one thing to note, we can take a look at the assets held by the by Grayscale and of course Genesis Digital Currency Group all under uh, or all connected to Grayscale. So we can see what tokens they actually hold. $14.6 billion in holdings from Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin, Zcash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Decentraland, Mana. Right? They own a lot of the big market cap tokens and coins. And if they're forced for whatever reason to sell because they need to actually you know, pay their, their creditors, it can be very detrimental for the price of the market, sending Bitcoin and the rest of the altcoins to new lows here. So in the immediate short term, I'm expecting choppiness for the rest of the week, but then I expect a massive expansion soon. If things actually play out here with Gemini, well then it's gonna get very ugly. So keep that in mind. But if it's not that bad, well, we're gonna see, right? If we actually start to break out higher because things are not that bad and we start holding support higher, right? Let's say we flip 17 to support, that's very good, that's very bullish, right? But what we don't want to do is get our hopes up by seeing a quick move to the upside back into the range high supply zone. That would be a bull trap, right? And the things start to go down lower from there. So what you need to know is that really not a whole lot happening right now. Trend is still really sideways on the higher time frames as we're in a range, but that's going to change soon. Now, in terms of ETH, ETH very similar to BTC right now. Really just been going sideways. Over the weekend, we did actually long down here at 1187, was my entry, at least as we can see here in the Discord. Right, we went ahead and longed ETH out of this rising wedge. Let's go to the shorter term time frame, or falling wedge, I should say, right? So we're actually closed out of this trade in profit, and we also went ahead and took a link out of a similar rising wedge. Uh, this was shared in the live stream on Sunday as well, right? So these were our two long trades when everybody was overly bearish over the holidays and New Year's. Everybody thought we were just going to capitulate down lower, but there was a lot of bullish signs in the charts. And here at Crypto Empire, we went ahead and took advantage by trading on the long side over here, as you can see. And so now I am waiting to see what does happen with this grayscale digital currency group and Genesis situation, as well as everything else that's happening, because the head is always on a swivel in the cryptocurrency market because information does move so rapidly. You need to always constantly be paying attention. All right, but I know this really wasn't too in depth with the TA and that's simply because we're really just going sideways here. Main support level below is 16,600. This is where the week opened January 1st, right? So if we're below that, I'm definitely leaning bearish. The fact that we're bouncing on it as support is somewhat promising. But at the same time, I know it can flip back into resistance very quickly. All right, so I think things will pick up towards the end of this week. Currently January 3rd. Watch around Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then January 8th as well. We're going to see what does happen. And if things get ugly, well then, you were forewarned that Gemini is in hot water and they could potentially go down. And this could be that next black swan. All right, but it's not all doom and gloom because I do expect the year to end green right we took a look at the 12 month candle and the past three cycles right we've seen three consecutive green years one red year 2022 was that red year so a lot to look forward to in the future of the cryptocurrency market but right now we're in the depth of the bear and we need to keep on trucking through it that's the only thing we can do because when the going gets tough the tough get going. So in this video, we went over the situation between Gemini Earn, Genesis, and the digital currency group, and what that could potentially mean for the cryptocurrency market. We also took a look at the price charts for Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I shared my TA on what I do see happening here. Again, right now the trend is sideways, but I expect massive expansion soon. No more sideways. We're either going to be going up or down, and a lot does depend on what happens here with the situation with Gemini. So I hope that you did enjoy this video. I want to hear from you. What do you think of this whole fiasco, this hodgepodge of money being lent everywhere and now it's all gone and here we are the customers left at the end of it wondering where our money did go. I want to hear from you. What do you think about the entire situation? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you are brand new to Crypto Empire and you are not already subscribed to the channel, 
definitely go ahead right now and smash that subscribe button and turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Also, go ahead and smash that like button down below as well. Excuse my raspy voice. I'm just getting over a cold right now. We're battling it, beating it down to the ground because no cold is going to stop me. It should not stop you either. Anyways, hope that you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Connor from Crypto Empire signing out.